I considered framing this as a selfless and objective account. I told myself, as I would tell you, that it wasn't a petition for pity, not a rant rooted in ressentiment, nor a humble brag, nor a piece of excuse-making. Those are lies. The truth is that I am sad and angry, and I do feel unfairly deprived of my privileges. I can only bring myself to admit so because I suspect I'm not alone in this feeling. The question lurking behind the present story time is how many, how many young men like me had every reason to believe they were going places, so they did their best, only to discover that the system was not interested in their contributions. How many have given up and shut down as I have? Finally, what are the results for a society if this happens on a regular basis? Speaking from my own experience, grade school gave me the sense of being singular, at least among those kids within busing distance. My alleged smarts were spoken of like sorcery, a strange mysterious power conferred on me by the fates. A classmate once asked if I had eaten a dictionary. I finished grade 8 math with a final above 100 which might say more about my math teacher than myself. All of which is to observe that the ear of one's ego has to bend towards something. It wouldn't have been sports. It couldn't have been church. Lord knows it wasn't Canada. Not having a tribe of my own, or a healthy and harmonious family, I could only take pride in my numerically quantified academic accomplishments as an atomized individual. So I was a student, a good student, a very good student. I would often like to protest that I didn't work that hard, only as hard as the projects apparently required, yet that minimal standard seemed to exceed that of others. Completing these mostly pointless and stupid assignments and watching others struggle with them undoubtedly warped me in all kinds of ways. I only wish that inflation and distortion of my character might have been harnessed for good. This may be where I went astray. I never got to a point with math or science where it was anything more than rote learning. If you understood the principles and followed them correctly, you always found the right answer. Maybe I could have been a great mathematician, but I could think of nothing less interesting. The practice of science looked similarly thankless, long stretches of dull routine broken up by occasional excitement. I made the choice to go into arts and humanities instead, as soon as I had the option. What was the essence of that choice? Was I moving toward understanding humanity, expressing myself and thinking creatively? Or was I just fleeing from the boring business of keeping this shit show running? I surely reveled in the maverick move of not doing the obvious, and I really hoped to find engaging shades of grey demanding messy interpretation. But I was also lazy and worn out from a decade of busy work while my peers were having childhoods. I think I had legitimate grievances against the status quo, against war and waste, corporatism and cacistocracy. But did I actually believe 
I could not operate within the establishment without compromising my principles. Or did it just look like too much trouble? I am trying to recount the ways my education failed me, but I can't get past my own complicity. I could be a rich doctor right now, instead of a destitute dreg. Sometimes smart people are improbably stupid. On that note, I eventually chose to attend Trent University. They had a department of cultural studies, and Maclean's magazine said they wore Birkenstocks and sometimes went to class in pajamas there. So that's the school I picked. The highfalutin hand-waving the program used to describe itself sounded good enough. Of course there are power imbalances in society. Of course there's injustice. Who wouldn't want to make the world more just and fair? It did all sound a little airy. But the program promised workshops in the arts. I would learn practical skills. If not a professorship, I could go into film or theater. Three career tracks in one degree. What could go wrong? I must pause at this point to draw out another animating idea for this bit. And that's the good faith assumption of a functioning society. You want to believe that your elders and superiors have guarded against decadence and decline. You want to believe that expensive degrees have value. It looked on the surface like cultural studies might be an indulgently speculative enterprise, an ivory tower endeavor far removed from reality. I knew that to be the unschooled assumption of retrograde country bumpkins. It simply wasn't conceivable that so many smart people could be caught up in a lie. If the emperor had no clothes, someone would have said something, and that cultural studies department would disband in shame. Of course, they had no shame. I was told about the pathological propensities of my people to want a happy family and a strong leader, and I was told that another people were the supreme paragons of moral virtue in human history. I figured out that I was only being very poorly taught how to put on a play or make a movie so that I could advance the social theories of my professors. Despite my efforts to avoid the dryly predictable patterns of rationalistic quantitative analysis, there was still only one right answer. And what was worse? It didn't even agree with reason. Two plus two was always five. My experience of cultural studies was akin to gaslighting. The hostility to anything normative seemed to come out of nowhere in second year after I had committed to the major. Yet all the students and professors treated it as established, proven, and beyond debate that we should all be Marxists disassembling the dominant culture. I looked around the table and couldn't see anyone as confused as I felt. Maybe it was me. Maybe I was mistaken. Maybe I was mad. The alternative was a lot worse to contemplate. I never kept my grades up for their own sake. The mark was a measure of the degree to which I had committed myself to understanding and embodying the principles conveyed. I could feel good about myself because I was playing along. I was learning the ropes so that one day I might captain my own ship in a vast armada.
together we would do great and glorious things, noble things we can't even imagine. All I had to do was listen to the words of those older and wiser than myself. Apply what they had taught me. Be reasonable and speak the truth. Speech is social and justice is true. So I thought that I was on board with social justice. I never expected that my degree would end with an epic moral quandary. I was just a few papers away from earning my honors, papers that I had imagined would be the culmination of my learning, tying it all up in a neat bow that would point to what the next step should be. Instead, I was more confused than at the beginning, not to say that I didn't have more ideas in my head. I knew the socio-political bullet points that I should work from if I knew what was good for me. But in truth, I had not been convinced of them. I could fake it, I was sure of that, but I wasn't sure I would emerge from that process the same person. A little part of me would die. The part that wants my reason, actions, and conscience to be in accord with one another. The very part that torments me to this day, but I keep alive anyway, in the hopes that one day I'll find a worthy use for it. <laughs>